Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Joe Cronin Show, episode one. I know that you're saying, what? There's been a Joe Cronin Show since 2012. Well, I'm doing the, uh, the all-new Joe Cronin Show podcast, and I know you're saying also that, Joe, you have many podcasts. What are you talking about? Uh, what about Morning Madness? What about all these other things? You know, well, I do all that stuff on the Patreon, and, um, you know, I just decided that I wanted to do a new show. And I, and I was thinking about where to launch it, and I didn't want to go through all the hassle of creating a new name and creating a new thing and stuff like that. So I am bringing the Joe Cronin Show to the YouTube channel and uh, to um, you know the iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. And I know that it's crazy because, again, the Joe Cronin Show has been around doing wrestling since 2012, so there's like thousands of episodes of that. But this is the Joe Cronin Show podcast, I guess. Uh, so this is the Joe Cronin Show podcast. And it's not like my other podcasts, like Corrupted, the one with my wife, Tommy, honestly, um, other ones after dark, and all these other things that I do on Corrupted Nation, Joe Cronin Show, and everything. So this is a individual podcast that I can do. It's not like Note to Self, where I record with my cell phone and I chat with you guys about some stuff. That's also a podcast that I do. Um, but they're all different in their varieties. But this one, we're going to have guests on just about every episode, and um, we're going to have sometimes some themes and stuff like that. I, I think it's going to be a little, I think this, this one's going to be a little bit more serious, if that makes any sense. Sort of like a mix of After Dark, Final Frontier, Honestly with Tommy, and just this sort of mix. And we're going to have guests and people you've never heard of. And so this is more for the people that, like, I guess, the serious stuff mixed with some of the comedy. Uh, mixed with interesting new characters and entertainers and creators and arts art artists and things like that. So that's what you're going to get here on the new Joe Cronin Show podcast. This is episode one. And for episode one, we're going to start with some questions. And then later on, I'm going to be joined by... Well, I'm going to be joined by Tommy NC2010 and Jesse J. They're going to join me in a little bit. Uh, but before they join me... Um, I want to get to some of the questions that came from Patreon. Um, so today, uh, and before I get to those, I do want to also mention, dude, that today, man, they released the UFO footage again. But the Pentagon released it officially because I guess before it was like leaked out by a secondary source. But we had always really been led to believe that the Navy and those people uh, leaked it out on purpose and allowed it to happen. So, you know, I really always thought it was official anyway, but I guess it wasn't official, and it never was fully really official. But now it is official because the, the Pentagon released the actual footage of these UFOs. You know, they're doing like the 90-degree angles, and they're flying faster than you can believe, and the pilots can't believe it, and it's really insane, man. It's really a wild thing. Um, so, it's crazy. Jag DePanzer says, when's the last time you were... Um, in a natural body of water. And Leah's puss doesn't count. Uh, <laughs> a natural body of water. I mean, um, damn, that's a great question because I really haven't been in the water in a long time. Oh, God, I, you know, I can't even remember. <laughs> you know, I'm dead serious. In fact, I got to tell you something. I have never, ever been swimming really with Leah. But actually, now that I think about it, I have been in a body of water with Leah. But not really. We were in the ocean about two years ago. Uh, we're at my mother's house. The beach is down the street in Boston, you know, where we used to live in my mom's house. Uh, the, the beach is down the street. So we would actually, um, we would go down to the beach and we went, you know, up to our waist in the water on a hot day with the kids. Me and the kids and everybody, we sat there in the water. So I guess that's the last time I was really in a body of water. That was, that was it. And then, you know, a couple times before that at the same beach, same thing in that water, um, same walked in kind of, but haven't really jumped in a, in a pool and swam since I think I was over my buddy Coleman's house, um, uh, when Leah was right around the time Leah was pregnant with, um, Gavin, I think she was there. It was like the 4th of July or something in the year 2009, I want to say that that's the year. That was when. I'd have to ask her. It might have been the year before that, but it was. Uh, and we were swimming in his, like, kind of one of those cheap above ground pools where, like, you know, you can, for 800 bucks, you can fill it up. And it's like a, you know, it's like a real pool, but it's smaller, you know, and that type of thing. And you can take it down easy. You know, that one of those type of deals where if, like, you leaned on the side the wrong way, the whole thing would collapse in. <laughs> 
Sausage uh, says, "What's the big the uh, what is the biggest time you've ever had in an immersive experience in a video game?" The biggest time you've ever had? I mean, like, I guess I don't know a hundred percent what you mean, but I mean, over the years, as far as video games go, you know, being a kid playing Mario for the first time, playing Sega, you know. That stuff, uh, I think Toe Jam and Earl was huge. Like, we had so much fun playing that for a while. You know, then I had a lot of fun playing Resident Evil, like a real lot of fun Resident Evil, uh, Metal Gear Solid. You know, uh, playing NHL on Sega Genesis back in the day. Um, you know, same thing to nowadays. Um, and then, of course, uh, playing Doom was a big thing. Playing Doom and Wolfenstein 3D, dude. I'll never forget playing Wolfenstein 3D. I want to say it was 97 or 96 or something. I don't know. That was a big time. Uh, Halo, obviously Halo 1, Halo 2, all the Halos, especially the early Halos. It was just such a incredible time. Um, playing Diablo uh, 2 and Diablo 3. I played a little Diablo 1, but I never got fully immersed into it um, back in the day. Uh, Command & Conquer was another big one. Command & Conquer Red Alert. And recently, it would probably be like Diablo 3, obviously the last eight years, and PUBG. You know, those are some of the big games for me. Uh, the original Resident Evil is like 1, 2, and 3. Um, Twisted Metal was also a lot of fun. Those are all my games, really. There may be a couple other ones I think I'm missing out on, but those are basically the roundup. Uh, Glorious Eugene on Patreon. And by the way, guys, if you want to support my podcast and my show and keep us going, we could desperately use your help. You get a bunch of content that you can't hear anywhere else on Patreon, including multiple other podcasts that you can just download right to your phone. And they're all with me and other people on them. And they're all crazy and different. So, you know, come on to Patreon. You get 30 hours of content a month, dude. It's crazy. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. All right. Um, also want to shout out to uh, one of the sponsors, uh, and so not sponsors, but one of our friends of the shows who gave us some good stuff. We had a lot of fun with the band Stabbing Westward. Uh, check out their new EP, De uh, Dead and Gone. Uh, you can listen to that, iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. Uh, buy the physical copies if there's any more available. I think they might be sold out now, but uh, check them out on Facebook, Stabbing Westward. And the interview with Chris Hall is also here on my iTunes as well uh, on Spotify and iTunes under Joe Cronin Show on Spotify and iTunes. Make sure you guys follow us on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, wherever podcasts are heard. But uh, certainly uh, you can get us on Spotify. Um, yeah, Glorious Eugene. And then we're going to be joined in a few minutes by Jesse and Tommy NC 2010. Glorious Eugene says, hope you are doing good. Thoughts on the new movies that should be released direct to streaming services and DVD, or should they wait till the next year? Yeah, I think regardless of what we want, they're going to wait till next year and they're going to re they're going to release them next year, so. Ah, that's too bad though. Uh but in the meantime, I think I think it may be what I'm more interested in saying is you know, I think the movie theaters need help and need a bailout. I think we all need to help as best we can the movie theaters and the restaurants and places like that. I'm hoping Hollywood steps up. I'm hoping Hollywood steps up in these big movie companies step up to sort of help the movie theaters or whatever. Um, I think that would be a big deal and that's something that they should do. And, um, you know, hopefully that they, uh, they do something like that because, uh, I think they're going to need it. Uh, I don't know, even know what they're going to do, man, but I will be devastated if we lose our movie theater near us, you know, cause it's such a great place. And, um, it breaks my heart that this whole like coronavirus things happen right as we get it. We're, we're celebrating almost our first year in this new house. We finally saved up all these years and we've been able to buy a house and, you know, it's, it's hard to own a house and it's hard to pay, the, pay for it and all these things. But, um, it, it breaks my heart, man, that we, that we had all this cool stuff around. We're living the American dream, the dream that forever we wanted. And now it's like, we can't go anywhere and it sucks because it's the movie theater is not that far away. Um, so there's all these cool things that we're, you know, that I'm kind of, you know, jazz, you know, sucks. Cosmic Crow says, uh, when will the quarantine end? The place you're going to shop or activity you're going to do, park, theater, restaurant? I think the theater, um, to be honest. Um, maybe restaurant probably too. Uh, I think I'm going to order some sushi. I haven't eaten sushi in like three months um, or two months. So probably order some sushi, uh, <laughs> go to the theater. I don't know. Something like that probably, man. Probably what we're going to do. 
Omar Fakarani. 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 What do you think will happen when we die? Well, unfortunately, I have the grim feeling that we go into the ground and nothing happens. But that terrifies me, man. I, I've said it a million times. I can't stand that that's what... Like, why would we have all this creativity and knowledge and these things and these thoughts and this ability? Um, and uh, in the end, all the animals just die and it doesn't matter. It seems like the animals just die and nothing matters with them, right? How many ants? How many dogs? How many raccoons? How many squirrels? They just die. You think that they really go anywhere, you know? Well, but, so what makes us different that we actually would go anywhere? You know what I mean? So that really hurts me. Uh, so I, I hope that I'm really wrong about that. I'm hoping that our souls are, or move on or that our essence moves on some way and somehow. But how could that be possible? It doesn't sound rational. And um, we sleep forever and that's it. And that is sad and scary and... If that's what really happens, then that means that our minds are really quite the delusion, you know. Our minds are really delu deluded into thinking that we're this uh, important, special thing, and maybe we are, but, uh, man, I just don't know how we are if just everything is just... <sighs> you know, and maybe we're going to find out a way to move into computers or something like that, you know, and that, those type of things, but even then... Are we really still alive if our brain dies? You know, we'd have to find a way to keep our brains alive, right? And then what? You know, try to stay alive forever that way? I mean, you know, so it's, I don't know, man. It's a very grim thing. But, uh, yeah, man, there's the questions on patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Let's get into, uh, let's welcome in Tommy and uh, Jesse J. First guest, episode one, the Joe Cronin Show podcast. Um, obviously, I've done thousands of other podcasts uh, for years under the name Joe Cronin, so this is confusing, but F it. What's up? Here we go. The throwback, Jesse J and Tommy NC2010. Couldn't ask Fucking for... Uh... So goddamn old, we're goddamn, we got Medicare. Speaking, yeah. about throw, speak about throwback, today I found a video on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. It was an old video that I did with Hamza. And I had a, uh, I had a, bu I had a butter knife in my hand, and I was talking about the different levels of like how ha how Hamza handles things, and it, I thought it was hilarious because it was such an old video. Because before I started on YouTube, I was actually putting my videos on Facebook, and I, I what sucks is I, I wish I could take my videos off of Facebook and just put them on YouTube you to show people. Why can't you? But. I just I, I don't know how to do it. You can like, hit the I, little you hit the, hard time. you hit the little fucking option button on the bottom and download. Does it it says download? It's on the uh, it's on the little option or the gear on your on your Facebook videos. Oh really? Yeah, you can download all those to fucking upload them to Facebook. Of course, I mean YouTube, of course. Yeah, I used mm -hmm. to have I used to put videos on MySpace. I took them off MySpace. Um, yeah, of course you can do that. Now, Tommy, um, it's really good to be here with Tommy and Jesse because uh, original guys here. But um, we're all suffering through the corona shit, the quarantine shit. Je you know, some people less than others. It's not affecting me as much. Not as I don't think it's affecting Jesse as much either. But it's it's probably affecting... Well, actually, it pisses me off. I was about to fucking, you know, I've been trying to die for like nine months. Finally, I say, all right, fuck it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw a line of trust out there. And then I'm going to go meet people, blah, blah, blah. Spring comes. Fucking everybody's in the same position I've been in for 31 years, so fuck it. Yeah, dude. How about that guy that woke up from a coma, like, fucking, like, a month ago? And, like, they were like, oh, Sorry, no. son of a bitch. Yeah, like, 10 years in a coma, a guy wakes up and they tell him, you gotta get the, like, you're fucked. Yeah, you... What? Yeah. Did, uh, he bail or, or... No, he just froze there for a second. Oh, I got you. Um, well, I can hear him now. What happened with this guy with coma, man? Yeah, let me, well, anyway, I don't know, but it's just kind of ironic. Tommy, earlier when we were on the pre-show, before we started recording, you said, guess who hit me up something? What were you talking about? I cut you off. I didn't get to the point. Oh, I was talking about my friend. I was, oh, uh... And we've we've been talking about this person. James Worley called me. 
Yeah, and you blocked his number, hopefully, right away. Yeah, I blocked his number. You did? Did you? Yes, I did. I blocked You kind of said that all weird. Like, well, what did he say to you? He was like, good morning there, Tommy. And I'm like, hey, Tommy, good morning. And I'm like, and I, all I did was I said hello. And he's like, Tommy, good morning. And then I just hung up on him. Like, I just I didn't want to talk to him. What a weirdo, him. man. What a weird dude. What What the hell, dude? Um, let, let he me... obviously knows that I don't so like tr- him. Tommy, do you trust him at all anymore? No, I don't trust How him at all. I, so, like, well, like, uh, I'm not saying you should do this or like, oh, why didn't you do this? Um, wouldn't it be easier to block the man's number? Yeah, like, that I, makes sense. Jesse, well, I, I mean, I, I, I could see him fucking with you and calling you from different numbers as well. But no, he's well, the guy. Because... No, that he's the one that calls Tommy and says, "Tommy, it's me." That's him. Oh no, I know him very well. He he fucking thought he knew every goddamn thing that was right for Tommy, even though like it was some controlling shit. Yeah, he's a weird dude. Tommy told me about a couple of things he did to Tommy that I didn't even know about from way back. And I was like, wait, that was him that did that? So there's just a list of things, Jesse, that like you would never do to someone who's your friend. And even if you did well, it's, it's narcissistic approach. I mean when you find somebody weak I'm not saying you're weak, Tom, but when you, when you find someone you can gain trust of, somebody that wants to trust, and you use it nefariously, yeah. it's fucking, that's what that guy's all about. Yeah, I, I do. Um, just to say, here's another thing that he did to me a long time ago. Um, like, he, he uh, it really was, like, vicious of him, mm. uh, what he did to me. I'll send him to you, Joe. Did he ever try to this sexually is... touch you? No. Any kind of sexual way? I don't know. Hey, um, so while you do that, Jesse, how funny is it? Me and you both listening to Tom Green and Joe Rogan. I'm an hour and 45 minutes in, and you fucking message me. You're listening to the same I podcast. I think I just fucking finished it. Yeah, fucking. No, I told you, man. We're psychically uh, linked. How Always about been. How about um, how about when, um, did you notice uh, towards the quarter of the way through to the middle of the way through, Rogan, whatever he was smoking or drinking or whatever, he was getting that like hyperness, that high hyperness of love and stuff, because he was like praising Green, I, like yeah. I learned Did, from was, you. Is that something that you watched? Uh, that you, I wasn't. See, I was listening to it. Is that something that you saw visually? No, I, just I audibly heard it because many times. Yeah. Okay, I got you. I think you really miss talking to Tom Green. Well, I, I think that that's true, but I think that also Tom, even Tom Green sometimes realized he had to bulldoze over Rogan because uh, because Rogan was running wild, and it was like, I think even at times, I don't think Tom Green was annoyed, but I think there no. were there were a couple times where he was kind of like, ugh, like, oh my God, you're lit. Like, I can't. So when was the last time he was on there? I haven't seen him on there in forever, or ever. No, I don't actually. think he's, I don't know if he's ever been on. I've never seen Tom Green and him talk, I, but I I'll tell you what. He kept saying, like, uh, uh, I haven't left my house. I left, I, you know, I would only leave my house for Joe Rogan. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny. And, and you know what's you know what's really funny about that is I listened to Tom Green's podcast a week ago. We talked about it a lot. Yeah, and on on his well, he just started it back up again a few weeks ago. But when he started back up again, one of the things he talked about was how he cleans all his groceries and stuff. And I'm like, dude, I'm cleaning mine the same way. And I even hit up Tom Green and I said, dude, let's do something. So I've been messaging Tom Green to try to get something going. Because he doesn't. That'd be great. Yeah, dude, you know I... it's funny. Celebrities like that don't listen to their, don't look at their DMs. Honestly, yeah. um, well, you have to in order for it them depends. to see your, in order for you to them to see your DMs, they have to get the, they have to be following you. Which, I, I message all sorts of celebrities all the time. I know well, they're not going to respond to me. You're a whore. Yeah. I'm not a whore. Well, I mean, it depends. I think some people do look and some people don't. But you're right, Tommy. It kind of you have to have something kind of showing like. That you're above the pack somehow, or that you stand out. Yeah, you know what I did though is I messaged Tom Green and I said, "Do you remember when I was on your show?" And I, I actually, I messaged him um, like stuff that he would maybe know or remember. See, and yeah, I was like, like you being there when he very first started that shit. If you worded shit right and you you brought him back to that time, that would totally get his attention. Like, oh shit, this yeah. guy fucking knows about me back when I was doing shit. Nobody 
fucking knows about or cares about. Yeah, so I like know? I I I mess I messaged him that. So hopefully eventually. But then he then he went on Joe Rogan like three days later, and I went, oh man, I'm never gonna get a hold of him now. Because, no, I know you could still get him. You can yeah, still get him. maybe in a week when things calm down a little bit. But I thought they had a great conversation, man. I thought yeah, they, they did. They like did. I, I'm trying to write down the people that like when you see him. And uh, when you see Rogan and the other guy, like you're like that's a must watch. Like, and I'm trying to think of the people. Dude, Al- I really want to fucking meet that that uh, uh, Eric Weinstein. Yeah, yes, I want to meet that motherfucker. Like, yeah, so straight up. That that's one guy like Weinstein. I um, like. I'll, I want to. He's in L.A. Like, I want to like go to a talk he's doing and just walk well, up to the motherfucker and he, hold my hand out and be like, and then start from there. Like he ain't talking is, now. He's incredible. He ain't talking shit now. Huh? Well, no. I was is the... that like the brother of Har- is that the brother of Harvey Weinstein? No, no, not there's... even. Oh, <laughs> that's well, like they have the same uh, last name. Well, there's a he's, million Weinstein's though, Tommy. He's ba- it's Weinstein if you actually. Well, yeah, it's Whoa. Weinstein. Yeah, it's Weinstein. Oh, but, should, but uh, dude, uh, he has the what I like name. about him is that he's not he's not safe and he's not afraid to tell you like. Uh, the, the Rogan or somebody will say, "Well, so what is going on? I don't know, but here is here's A, B, and C. Here's yeah, what I do yeah, know, exactly. or here's here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. He's not afraid to tell you he fucks up. He might forget some things. He might mess up some names, but he's he's like he's got balls. Yeah, you know? yeah. I really liked him, man. I really enjoyed Tom Green too, and I enjoyed him. And and you know, some of it, unfortunately, one of the things too is like. You know, depending on Rogan, depending on what he's smoking or drinking or feeling, you know, it, his performance can matter, too, with how he interacts with people. Because he can, sometimes he's a little different, you know. The, well, hmm, that's what I liked about uh, him and Weinstein, now, this, the very, the most recent one, was because he, he almost tried to say, like, oh, yeah, hey, let, let's go to the, he wanted to kind of just push yeah. past it and not really go in too deep. He wanted to stay safe. And then next thing he knew, Weinstein had him where he was like he could not look away, he couldn't stop listening. He, it, it was it, I loved that moment because it was, it was like Rogan would have chicken shit it out with anybody else, but you can't do that with this guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, dude. Remember Owen Benjamin when he was on there too, and then like how they had like a little like Owen Benjamin like shit on him then later, called him like midget and toe Rogan and all this shit and, like it was. Oh. Fuck? Oh, dude, if you, you miss some of the greatest streams I've ever seen in my life. Dude, oh, he would choke him out like for dude, just Dude, oh, Owen, Owen Benjamin did streams on Rogan about how he's like a crazy person. And basically, Owen Benjamin reminded me of Scott McKinnon, but like like smarter and like with more clout. And like his streams were unbelievable at a time. I, I hope that some people have documented them and they're up somewhere. Because there How were, was he on the show? Uh, on Rogan oh no, he was good. he was all right, but he wasn't that good because and one time there was like another guy on the show and the other guy was on drugs, and the guy just bulldozed over everything they were both talking about and ruined the whole show and the whole comment section was filled with that like this fucking idiot ruined the show, and uh, yeah, it was real weird. But uh, dude, I, you know, I don't know, but that the show's good, man. I feel like we're in a resurgence. I don't know if this is true, uh, a renaissance almost. And you know, they talked about that on the uh, podcast about. The Black Plague happened, and then the Renaissance happened after the Black Plague because it was a big awakening type of thing. I feel like we're in that sort of awakening right now at home where people are going crazy, but then there's also this, like, awakening happening. Not in the same level at all. I just mean personally. It's been happening for a while, but it's been more like (laughs) underground seeds. Like, people kind of just ignored it, call it conspiracy theory. Maybe some people were oblivious to it completely. Now everybody's getting a chance to wake up even a little bit. You know, yeah. I also feel like personally, like personal connections are coming back together, and, and stuff like that's happening. Oh, fuck! You mean like people uh, who can't work and shit, staying at home with their family, getting to spend time they didn't have before? Yeah, that and like old people, you know, finding each other again and, and things like that. Yeah, it's like a real strong feeling of that happening. My God, Tommy, you're gonna make me yawn too. Oh well, yeah. uh, goodness, Tommy can't was... believe what we're talking about right now. It's blowing his head over. No, no, I'm, I'm not. Uh, I'm not yawning at you guys. I'm. Just, <laughs> well, dude, it's it's four in the morning. You know, this ain't a long podcast. Though. This is this podcast is gonna be. Uh, you know, it's it's a new one I'm doing, and I'm gonna talk about some things, and then afterwards I'm gonna have somebody on the show. So this is the first. Don't worry, Tommy. He, he's that. just gonna. He, he he never gets to our podcast, so he's gonna call it after honestly. 
<laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, man. Tommy, um, Tommy, what does your button say? Oh, it's a, uh, it's a uh, part of the John C. McGinley fan club. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I what think a homo. it's about because uh, John C. McGinley has a son with Down syndrome, and I think it's oh. about uh, going against Down syndrome. Jesus. Um, and uh, so he, apparently, his fan club got him. A replica jacket mm. of his uh, jacket that he wore on Scrubs, because apparently Disney wouldn't release the original jacket, costume jacket that he had on the show. So the fan club made a replica Scrubs, uh, replica Scrubs uh, doctor's jacket for Doctor Cox. God, can you imagine what the fucking like the club for the the fan club for Scrubs is like? I mean, what are those fucking people doing? You know, can you imagine the fan club for Scrubs? Yeah. Like what they look like and smell like? <laughs> Wait, are you talking that fucking show that's been around forever? Yeah, that USA. Wasn't that on USA? No, it was on uh, NBC, I think. Oh, really? Okay. Well, well then it went to Comedy Central. Well, it went to Comedy Central and ABC. and. Did the reruns go or did the new shows go? Well, the old the old shows go to Comedy Central, I think. They they really? were it, Scrubs was on Netflix for a while, but then the contract expired. Yeah, and it really hasn't been. It was okay. It was a little sitcommy for me, but it was good. You know? It made me laugh. I every like I I I couldn't like I I laughed at every episode. I thought that was I, absolutely I, hilarious. I think was Leah that liked main it. Guy that was in it, Zach Braff. Uh, yeah, Leah, Leah likes that show a, a little bit, I think, at one point. I, I didn't really like it because I felt it was okay, though. Like, it was good, but I just, I didn't really like it that much. But it reminded me kind of like of a B comedy. Like, like if The Office is an A comedy, it reminded me of more like a B or a C comedy. Like a, almost like a st straight-to-video movie, but instead it was a TV show. But it was good. It was a good show. I just didn't, I didn't like it that much, but it was good. I watched yeah, all episodes bad. of The Office. I watched every single episode of The Office, and I, I like this show, Loser. but I, I gotta tell you that uh, Steve Carell's character is just so cringy. Like, he just... Very, he, he, remind, he reminds, reminds me, me of you. Of God of cringe. He reminds me of you. To be honest. What? Yeah. I, I kind of get what Joe's saying with that, but... but... Sort of. I, I, honestly, <laughs> some of the stuff that 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 Steve Carell's character do, would do, I would not do. I'm just joking. Well, it's not I, that. I, it's not that you do exactly what he what he would do. It's just this feeling and a vibe, like it, uh, spontaneity. Like you never know what you're gonna say next, what you're gonna do. You know? Yeah. I've been compared yeah. to him too, as well in the show. Leah thinks I mean, I'm like the, in the show. That show is great because you, if you didn't like one or two people, like there was somebody for everybody. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. It got weird at the end though. When when Steve left the show, it was kind of weird. Yeah, a lot of people said that when Steve Carell left the show, that The Office died. Like, because they even had a few episodes with guest actors on it. Like, uh, what was his, uh, the guy from Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. He play he did a few episodes on there. Which guy? I forget now. Uh, more, I, I want to hear more, more oh, Bell. Will, you know? Will Ferrell was on like two episodes. Which, it didn't work. Are you talking about, you want to hear more Bell? Are you talking about fucking Christopher Walken? No, he's talking about well, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Honestly, I gotta tell you, I I, 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 I do not I do not like Will Ferrell. Yeah. Will Ferrell is one of the most annoying actors besides yeah, his except serious old roles. School. I'll give him that. Old school was fantastic. Yeah. Old no no, dude. I like old school and Anchorman, but I, I, other than that, like I'm trying to think, like what else is he good in? I don't like anything else he's in. I don't he's think he did so he did something where his like a serious film where he basically in the same day he gets fired. His wife leaves him and then throws all his stuff out of the house. Yeah. When it's his house and he's just drinking beer and just sitting there and trying to figure out how to straighten his life out. I thought did it that work? was rather good. Did it work out? Yeah, because like, I feel like Adam Sandler was able to cross over that way, but I don't think Will Ferrell has ever. You know, like Jim Carrey and, and Adam Sandler, I feel like were able to cross over to the serious stuff, but I've never seen Will Ferrell really be able to do that. Um, but. You know, I think Will Ferrell was great on Saturday Night Live, but other than uh, that, 
you know, I, I, I he's had like three. Like I said, I think uh, those two movies. Maybe there's another one I'm forgetting. I did not like Step Brothers. I thought that was dumb. Oh, Step Brothers is the worst movie ever. It is the stupidest movie. Dude, some people I, I love it. I'd rather hit myself with a tack hammer than watch that movie. And Talladega Nights, I didn't like that one either. I didn't. Oh, God. Oh, people said that's the best movie ever. I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. Fuck yeah, you. some people, dude, really like these movies. And I'm like, really? I don't know what. I Maybe I'm lost. And I hate the other guy. That other dude, I hate that guy. Like, I can't stand that guy. I don't think I've ever laughed at anything that that guy's done. The Step Brothers guy or the other guy. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck is funny about that guy. I don't find him funny at all. So yeah, I want to say his name's John something. Yeah, I don't like that guy at all. I thought John we, Lovitz. No, John Lovitz is. Oh God, no. John Lovitz if it was is Lovitz, hilarious. I'd be all over it. Yeah, I mean, John Lovitz is like funny in a weird way. Like he's losing his mind, <laughs> dude, and I'm reaping all the benefits. When he's in uh, a league of their own and they're getting on the train, and he says something like, "I forget what he says." Like he's like, "Fine, stay here and milk a cow for all I care." Or whatever he's like, <laughs> just something, and he's totally reminds me of Tommy C. Like he is Tommy C. <laughs> like I'm swear to God. Okay, so the guy we're thinking of is John C. Riley. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't even know the guy's well, name. Well, I got his name here on Google. Yeah, there is. John- I tell you, who is a really good actor is Martin Short. That uh, he is, I think he's hilarious. He's good. He's Martin great. Short. Yeah, yeah, I like Martin Short. He yeah. did. Uh, you know, he did. They did a musical. Uh, he did a musical with Steve Martin on Netflix, and uh, it was Jeez. really funny. Wait, I thought it they just. Like- I thought they did a stand-up bit on there. They did a musical yeah, they, too. Yeah, they did a stand-up bit, and he, uh, Steve Martin, was talking about a story how he met Elvis, and that Elvis had this person that would, you know, move him along back when he was still alive, and he said that Elvis took all his guns out, oh. and and uh, handed him handed handed him the clips, and uh, you know, and Elvis had the the guns, and then Steve Martin had all the bullets and the clips. And he like Steve Martin's like, okay, where's the person that should be getting us out of the situation? <laughs> Dude, tell me you guys well, you have know, seen the jerk. I remember back in the day when Elvis, I used to work with Elvis, used to butt fuck me. Me and Elvis would bump puck, but butt pump each other outside of San Francisco. That's the Steve Martin story. Um, how about this? Did you remember when I did the skit about Steve Martin and I was like? A lot of people don't know this, but, um, you know, I was molested. Oh, my God, Steve, you were molested, Steve? Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. But I, I never wanted to tell anybody because it was uh, the, the cheaper by the dozen kids, and they all molested me. <laughs> and it was a story I about... I have not Steve. seen that, but oh that's, my a, God. that's a dozen rapes. Dude, it was wicked funny. I was like, he's coming out, and, like, Steve Martin's claiming that he got raped, and you're like, oh, God, and you're feeling bad, and you're like, we got to know about who did it, expose them. Well, I didn't want to tell anybody because I didn't think anyone would believe me. Hey, listen, you ever been raped by a bunch of kids? Nobody would believe that I was the one raped by the kids, <laughs> but I was. You know, I was, like, doing the whole fucking thing. It was... Dude, I don't know what oh you guys think. I thought Bowfinger was fucking hilarious. No, I love Bowfinger. Oh, my I God, dude. dude. That shit, if you go back and watch that now, you'll be so many things that people don't remember in the movie that are fucking hilarious. The dude. The jerk was pretty funny. Oh, yeah, the jerk but- is great, but... Oh, oh, oh God, my jerk God, fucking... all these cars are Yeah, like, the jerk is funny, like, in, like, this... It feels more like the jerk is this epic, like, more people would accept it. But Bowfinger is great because it's so fucking retardedly ridiculous. Like, it's so... That one got more traction. I think the jerk, you have to be more of a Steve Martin fan. Yeah, maybe you're right. It's maybe a lot right. of his comedy and what he was working with at the time. Dude, when when he's fucking, like, all the moments... Basically, Eddie Murphy like steals that movie at times when like somebody runs on a set he's like i'm really i'm really i'm really worried about these aliens or whatever and then the fucking guy comes over and she's like talking to him and she's like kid i knew you'd come to me or whatever and he's like ah like that shit was fucking hilarious all that stuff is hilarious oh, that's so good dude i watched it I mean, just the just the plot of it like how to make a movie with somebody without them knowing it is just it makes you that immediately makes you think and then it's hilarious yeah Dude, you think it's you think it's kind of ridiculous that movies. You got plutonium. Do you feel like it's ridiculous that movies <laughs> just awfully push the fart joke? Comedy movies like push mm. the fart joke a little too much. I feel like good comedies push don't push the fart joke. They kind of like 
put it out there, but I feel like movies today <clears throat> just focus <clears throat> too much on the fart joke, honestly. Well, well wait a minute. They, I, I feel like they did that already. I feel like movies did that in, like, 04 to... I think Tommy's trying to say, though, like, they go for the cheap pop, I guess, if we could use a wrestling term. Maybe that's... There's, like, there's no substance. Well, comedy's just... bad. Did all the comedy movies now? All what? movies are bad. That's why all the good, all the good gigs are uh, TV shows. No matter where you're at. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, TV can you shows. name a movie? Like, try to name like in the last oh, ten that, years. Oh, the one with uh, Robert De Niro, uh, Al Pacino. That motherfucker was pretty good. Comedy? No, I'm sorry. It was. No, a, I'm a saying nice like, movie. dude, try to think of a comedy in the last ten years. And the last comedy that I thought was kind of funny. Yeah. Was the Hangover? I think I don't even know if oh there's another God, one. That was I recently watched. That's classic. I yeah. recently watched the Hangover again, and because I I know some interesting facts about you know the that actor that sang the song. What do tigers dream of? Oh yeah. yeah. When they take a the little tiger snooze, do they dream of mauling zebras? All right, Tommy. God damn it. Very inner tiger right. Don't you wear oh, your Oh, speaking of comedy. Uh, the second and third one were fucked. Wait a second. Was a third one. I got to show you guys this. Did you guys see... You guys didn't see Raw tonight, did you? Obviously. Absolutely no, I, I got to show you. Dude, I'm telling you that this is funny as fuck. And I got to show this to you because it cracked me the fuck up. So tonight, Seth Rollins is playing this character now where he's like the Messiah and the Savior. Oh, and God. but it's good because Seth was always bad as a good guy because he comes off like a he comes off like a sniveling cartoon villain like hey, hey, hey. and now he's back to that being this I'm a savior and a messiah and he's going on about like you know Drew I'm gonna take your title and like you're gonna find out about the sacrifices and he's and he's going on and on and it's like annoying and out of nowhere Drew grabs his head and smashes his face off the table. And it's fucking hilarious. Like, it's <laughs> wicked fucking funny. And I want to show... Uh, you won't be able to hear it, but I'm going to hold my phone up. Because this is fucking funny, dude. Like, the whole show tonight was terrible. <laughs> Everything was bad. And then they got to this, and I fucking started bawling, dude. I was like, that is... That comedy, that comedic timing that they had on that was so fucking funny, dude. And I'm like, I, I think you guys are going to like this. I got to get to it, though. Hold on a minute. You know, Joe, there's some moments in wrestling that, I, like, the smallest things that that make me laugh sometimes. Like, if a wrestler takes a shot and he has this look of, like, where am I? And then he just falls over. Yeah. Or oh, yeah, yeah. A yeah. reaction of the referee or something <laughs> like that, you know? Here you go. I'm going to give it to you right now. Ready? I'm going to hold my screen up. Oh, you I'm shaved, like, Joe. I did days ago, yeah. Um... Let me get it on my widescreen so we can try to see it. All right, let me switch cameras. Let me uh, put it up uh, nice and big for you. So That's you guys can watch said. this. Yeah, you like that, huh? All right, here we go. Have faith in big <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but you got to hear because it goes on for a while. So, like, ready? will become very clear and trust me when I tell you you will be better off for it <laughs> have faith in <laughs> 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 But you got to understand that, like, he was going on and on for, like, 15 minutes. Like, I know what you're capable of. And, like, all these things, and he's just doing this whole thing. And when he smashes his head. Jesse, did you see that? Yes. I don't think Jesse thought it was funny. Jesse? No, you know me. I'm dealing with a shitty fucking internet connection. Oh, did so you I'm, not? I'm with you. Oh, did you miss but, it? Did you not see it? I, I heard it. I didn't see it. Oh, you got to see it, dude. Let me know when you're good. I'm good. I, I can see you. Oh, okay, because it's fucking funny, dude. I got to I gotta stop the show to tell her, but I want to, but, like, the sound is so good, like, the whole thing. I'll give you a couple of pieces of advice. Though. Who's talking to each other? One. Drew McIntyre's talking to Seth Rollins. Okay. Shut your mouth. Stop talking. Forever. Nobody wants to hear Seth Rollins talk. 
be it right now, backstage, online, I assume to your family and friends, you have this unique talent. When you open your mouth, somehow you get your foot stuck in there. And yet, at the same time, <laughs> you get your head stuck up your ass. It's Dude, impressive, he likes, actually. You You're get your foot stuck up. Uh, number there. two. You jumped me a couple of weeks ago. You didn't finish the job. At the Money in the Bank pay-per-view, finish the job. Go for the throat. Because I'll sure as hell go for yours. <laughs> At Money in the Bank, the big picture will become very clear. And trust me when I tell you, you will be better off for it. <laughs> oh my god dude just the look on that jesse did you miss it again you dildo well no i got everything except i missed like it sounded like someone got hit and i couldn't well, nothing that's the best part oh, well i can't see it i have a shitty connection oh i thought you said you oh god damn it all right that's the best part. Well, is, is I seeing. see them standing still. Nah, dude. The nah, best dude. part is watching it. You got to go watch it later. Like, the best part is watching it. It's yeah, fucking like, hilarious. Later, like, fucking, like, clip it with your phone and send it to yeah, me. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet it out or something or, or send it to you. Cause it's... I don't have Twitter, you fuck. Oh, well, all right. Well, listen, guys. Um, We got to fucking wrap it up anyway. Is there anything, though, before we go that you guys Shit, want to... Uh... always something. Yeah, well, um, let's bring it to the table now, man. Let's bring it to the table. What do you think about the... Uh, I mean, um, I'm trying to, like, fucking conceptualize or I'm trying to, like, brainstorm here what we're going through. And, um, you know, it's weird, man. Like, we've been in the house. Don't uh, don't be too compliant. That's all I can say, and I've been saying that since the beginning. Yeah, no, I agree, though. you got to be, you know, you can't be stupid. Like, fuck, I'm not going to listen to any of this shit. But you also can't be ready to roll yeah. over and give out your fucking... Yeah, because what, I, what I feel is going to happen, and, like, I fucking wish I was wrong. Usually I'm right when it comes to bad things psychically. I think they're going to fucking, like, uh, okay, everything will sort of start to get back to normal. Like, slowly dole it out, and then wham, right as we start to get a little bit, like, at peace... They're going to do the same thing again, but because they've tested our compliance, I feel like they're going to hit it harder. This is a soft roll. This isn't that bad. If they decide later to tell everybody to fucking jump off a goddamn bridge, people are going to be ready. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, I mean... I mean, that and that scares me. It's kind of like, fuck that. Oh, hey, did you hear Jesse Ventura is talking about having a run? Thank God. But he does that every presidential election. Nah, yeah, but this is different because he said it before that he wasn't going to because he loves his life in Mexico. Why would he want to Well, he's politics? not in Mexico now. Maybe that's why because he ain't in Mexico I, now. I think, dude, he's I'm not in Mexico Jesse. now. The Mexicans asked me to leave. They told me to get out. They don't want any of the gringos going back and forth, so I had to leave my house in Mexico. Uh, I haven't voted in 10 fucking years. I'll vote for him. I'll vote for... I heard I'd he's going to be into the too. Green Party. What the fuck is that? That's when you love the environment. Fuck that. Yeah, that's like that, that vegetable-eating bitch. Well, no, I feel like he'll fuck it up by going for a party nobody understands. Like, he needs to go for the independent. Yeah, just go for the independent. I think it's he, interesting. <laughs> Bernie tries to run for president all the time, then he starts a campaign, then basically he just goes off. Like it, it's, yeah. All he the, tried running. These people. You fucking these, porch monkeys! I've done everything for you. I did everything, and now I'm, I'm a stupid idiot. I gave. I, I got all your money. Thanks for your money. Now I'm going to hand it off to He's Biden. Not a real independent. That's what bothers me. He's a I fake. I like what Jesse Ventura has to say about how he'll do things. He said right. it for years. Yeah, I, I. You know, I think Jesse would go down in flames too. Like, I don't think Bernie... Bernie's a pussy. Like, Bernie's a liar. Wait a minute, wait, fucking, wait, wait, wait. Say that. What do you mean about Jesse? I think he'd go down in flames fighting. You know, he'd fucking... He's if he had to. He, he won't fuck it. Like, that, right, that's the only thing I like about, like, Trump being there is that he's not... He's not fed by the same agenda as everybody else, and neither is Jesse Ventura. In fact, he'll try and do everything he can to actually be a man of the people i don't think i was that. watching a movie with jesse ventura and it was uh the Predator. uh <laughs> what is it no holds bar 
Oh, uh, yeah. Old... Oh, wow. Going back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I got to tell you what, those two actually were really good announcers together. Uh, like, you know, it's like those two kind of bounced off each other like rubber and glue. Imagine if Jesse won and you had to go back in time to 1987 to tell your other self that someday Jesse Ventura was going to be president and so wasn't Donald Trump from I, WrestleMania. I think he's the best <laughs> um, choice we've got other than um, Trump. Yeah, I kidding. agree. I would, I would, oh, yeah. If you named, if you put Jesse up there, I'd vote for him over over Trump and over uh, Bernie for sure. Yeah, I say either one of those two were good to go, but I, re- I man, I've been fucking dying to see Jesse Ventura get I in. I heard a just, rumor yeah. that The Rock yeah. wanted to run for president, but that's like, a, yeah, that's a, that's a Rock uh, move, like a like a yeah, it's a carny move, man. He's yeah. that's just to get attention. He 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 doesn't have what it takes. In fact, he'd be a yes man. Well, it'd be kind of hard for him to go gray because he doesn't have a. <laughs> Any hair on his head? What the hell does that have to do with anything? It, mean, it means Obama went gray after like. Oh, four okay, years. all right. I'm like, what the fuck? If you but, look at yeah. if you look at every president's picture, um, like Not from their Trump's. terms, like when they get to the end of their term, they are absolutely gray. Well, like, not Trump, man. He's taking Adderall up the ass. Hey, He's they're not all good. gay. Come on. Oh, gray. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I, I hope it's not bullshit, though. I really do hope Ventura gets in there. Like, cause here's the, I feel like here's the first thing I'm going to do. Je- let me tell you this. The first thing I'm going to do is we're going to I'm going to murder Hillary. That's the first thing I'm doing is killing Hillary. <laughs> that bitch had it coming. Yeah. And I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God, man. I'll tell you what, though. Um. Well, I'll tell you afterwards, actually. But anyway, that's about all the time. Anything else, uh, boys? Uh, I, I appreciate you guys being here for episode one. I had a you lot know, of fun. Joe, I got to say Where something here. Like, I, I recently, I don't know if I told you this, but I was watching the uh, old, I, I've been watching some of my older vlogs, mm-hmm. and I came across the uh, Wrestling Darlings vlog. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I like as I was going through some of the videos, I found the video where I threw this through the soda and J- at JD's uh, ear. Yeah, <laughs> it went in his fucking ear. <laughs> he was so pissed, you could tell, but he was like being cool. Like, all right, I'm not gonna. <laughs> and then I tried. I, I thought I thought he was gonna be cool, like it was gonna be a work. And then I walked out and yeah, I walked you, back in, and I remember. But I it was, was like, it so was, nice. It, but it was a work. You guys were playing around. What wasn't a work is you actually dumped. Coke in his ear. That's what, what that you know. That's not a work. You can't work that. Yeah, but if you would have done that to you, even if you were pissed for a second, you would have fucking ran with it. Well, well I, he did kind of. Like he, he ran with it, but he was kind of like he kind of like smiled. You can see how he smiles. Like he want. He's like, <laughs> like I would fuck some. Like I'd be pissed. I should be pissed. I'm kind of pissed. Get but the fuck down. out of my house, God Get the fuck out and of my the house. The funny thing is, um. I came back in. I was like really nice to him, and I, was, I took a towel and I like I was trying to damp him off. He's like, "No, no, bro, don't worry about it, bro." And I'm like, "Dude, I just threw soda in your face. Like, yeah. I feel bad. Like, I at that <laughs> don't worry about it, bro. I had plenty of cum it, it in my ear. I'm good. It was just an accident. It wasn't a work. He knew it was an accident. You didn't mean to, but you were getting hyper at the time, and you could see that he was totally uncomfortable with that. Like, Damn. like, I, I, like I'm comfortable with it. Like, I was having fun with Tommy. Like, me and him were having a good time. But you can tell that JD isn't really the type that like, like, like plays too much around like that. He gets kind of like. He likes it to be like he wants to know what's coming. Right. The whole he's... entire video was built off of I think about Brock Lesnar, and I was trashing Brock Lesnar, or either one it was Brock Lesnar or CM Punk, and he came in and started to stick up for that wrestler. And then I got yeah. into an argument with him. And I picked up the soda. Yeah, you said like he should be basically kind of like threaten his life or something. It was like the Brock Lesnar. You're like he should be killed or something. It was something crazy. And then JD came in like took the opportunity to come in and be like, "Bro, what are you saying?" and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> poor windshield cleaner in his throat. Oh. Well, I mean, I mean, Coca Cola is good and all. You can clean a battery out. You can clean fucking uh, rusty battery with that shit. Yeah, he he did. But he hey, had, yeah, gonna kill anybody quick. He had enough. But, of, he had had enough of Tommy. Not in a bad way. It wasn't that bad, but he was just like he just totally 
couldn't deal with it. He was like, I, I, I love the uh, one of the interesting thing I thought was about that night was I don't know if it was you or him that was like suggesting to me, hey Tommy, you should just stay the night and drink with us all night. And I, I'm like, no, 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 I can't do that because I have an early morning myself. Well, I didn't have an early morning. I just had to go to the wrestling show uh, because they had invited me and they gave me the VIP. Yeah. Uh, let me sit front row and uh, I got to meet Jim Cornette and stuff like that. It was really cool to do that. But I, I appreciate you guys asking me that like yeah i thought that was really nice of you yeah we wanted you to have we definitely were like yeah come hang out like stay the night fuck it i mean we did the same thing dude we had i think we had do we have the darlings the next day yeah we had the we had the darlings the next day and then i remember yeah, I we remember were fucking hung over saying, in the morning me and jd were hung over in the morning and then we met like 25 of our fans at the bar in the morning, hung over and drank. Dude, I remember you telling me like <laughs> you went out to breakfast and you were all fucking hung over as shit, right? Yeah, we were. Uh, dude, I was fucked. He wasn't as hung over as I was, but, but dude, we were. Yeah, we were fucked up, dude. I took. I had to shit like twice from the dehydration. Uh, we're meeting like listeners of the show. Like I have so many pictures. Everybody there was awesome. Talvish was there. Tons of people. And um, yeah, dude, it was fucking. And then we went to the internet, darlings. After that, luckily by then I my stomach was better and I. You know all that shit, and JD was I loaded didn't realize at, at how the much Darlings. drama was going behind that event. I mean, there really wasn't any other than like Scampoli like threatening to call yeah, like a the bomb whole thing threat was in. <laughs> I, I went and watched a video about that whole drama with Scampoli, and I'm just like, oh, you know what? So, you sent that to me recently, and I didn't watch it. Is that an old video or a new one? I don't know if it was new or if it was old. What was but it I, called? I, I watched the whole entire video, and I'm like, so that's why Scampoli was pissed off. I never could figure out why Scampoli was upset. Then I watched the whole entire video, and I realized Bloppy was a oh, piece of shit. Holy shit, it's a new video. It's from um, it's from uh, March 4th, 2020, so it is new. Did they talk about me, be, me and JD being replaced? Um... They didn't even mention. They they mentioned. They they didn't. I was waiting for them to say your name, and they never said your name once in the video. They just wow. mentioned Blompy, and they mentioned. Uh, I think they mentioned JD. They like. They mentioned, I'm like, Joe was a part of that event. Yeah, that's because they know Joe's fans will eat him for fucking lunch, breakfast, dinner, and shit him out, and then eat him again. Wow. They told. They, I mean, they but the whole reason that me and JD went to the event was because we were the substitute for for uh, Kevin. Really? Yeah, me, me and JD were the substitutes for Kevin. We weren't, we wow. weren't gonna, we weren't gonna be at the show. So they left that, whole, they left that whole fucking thing out. I'm in the, yeah, I, I see that I'm in the video, but not mentioned once. Nope, nope, they never. I, that that kind of pissed me off a little. I'm like, what? Joe was the filler. Like, I'm like, why were they not mentioning his name? And they just mentioned, you know, JD. The whole entire time, and Blompy and the whole entire argument back and forth, and I and I said, "Wow!" So this there was that much drama going on, and I. Oh yeah, dude, know, that that's funny that someone made a video about this. We're all gonna have to go watch this later because that that's hilarious. But yeah, know, this I, that dude. I'll tell you though, that was um, Brian Zane's a nice man. He's a nice guy and everything else, but he is a bit of a SJW type, you know. He was not. He got me into the event for free. Like he was really yeah. nice. He got me into the event for free. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he was really a nice guy. Like he is a little bit. You know, I even told him, man. I was like, hey, I don't even agree with this. You know, I don't think that the guy's that big a deal. And he was. And he was really having. And you know, the other thing about this this video is these people are dumb for not trying to interview me and everybody else from the show, because I got so much backstage news on this whole fucking thing that it's crazy. Like. When Ad when uh, Scampoli was calling in the bomb threats or saying he was gonna call a bomb threat in, um, you know, fucking Brian was like fucking almost hyperventilating at the show. Like he was very nervous and worried. Like he was really scared that that was going to happen, and he was like freaked out. And I was really? you know I was messaging Scampoli like, dude, you're not gonna fucking. I was like, you know, you're giving this guy a fucking heart attack, you know, you know, and he was like, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was really, cra it was kind of crazy. But, I mean, I didn't really notice all that because I was worried about what we were doing. But, yeah, there certainly was, like, a a big controversy, so to speak. Uh, and then that's why 
again, that me and JD got put in there. And that actually sort of caused a little bit of... Uh, Scampoli never got mad at me, but he did bash JD at the time because he watches the show, you know? So he was like, well, I like Joe, so cool, whatever. So he kind of more targeted JD. Um, but it was kind of fucked up that we essentially took a spot. Like, and they, you know, they he took a two for one. He took JD and Joe over uh, Scamp. So... Joe, is that true that the whole entire time when I was at that event that Grim was, <laughs> like, sitting in the back afraid of me? What Did he say that? Who said that? I thought somebody had said that the whole entire time when I was there. He was, like, trying to avoid me and not say oh, anything. Oh, I'm sure because... he – I don't think – I don't know if he's afraid of you, but I'm sure he was – he was probably trying to avoid you, probably, yeah. He's clearly scared of autistic people. I mean, come on. You know, I I, uh, I showed him my new wrestling ring. I I took I got that, my that new guy is not ring. the guy you think he is. All right, I can't. What? I won't even say. Grim? But yeah, he's not the guy. He's not that guy. Is not the guy. like anybody who like you see on YouTube that you could ask me like who is the most not like what they're like on camera. I would say that he's like one of those guys. He's a he's nice. He's cool, but he's a party animal, like fucking psycho. Fuck, you don't even know. You know, like it's not. It's I don't know, man. I always got a vibe that he was like this, really big family guy, and he's got the toys, and he's a goofy. You know, he's way more of a like a, like, he's like a rock star or something, like a fucked up rock star. Did like, he actually get divorced, or was yes, that just uh, that's real? Off- that's real. And the reason really? why would blow your mind. And I don't even really know 100%, but that guy is wild. Jeez. That dude is wild. Like, I mean, like, just think about, like, the most fucked up rock star. Like, that, this, like, I mean, more than, way more than me. You would think that, like, some people would probably think that I'm, like, a fucked up crazy person. But in real life, I'm not. I mean, I'm fucked up and we, you know, I am, I got my fucking shit that I'm weird and shit. But, I mean, I'm not, like... I'm not like this, like, or and not that there's, there's nothing wrong with how he is. It's just you wouldn't believe, like, what he, you know, you just wouldn't believe it. You'd think a whole different thing, you know. You know the interesting fact, Joe. When I hit in 2016, when I hit 100k subscribers for the first time, and I was in that ballpark, did you know Grim was the first person I wanted to do a collaboration with and like do some stuff with him and do like a whole wrestling bit and stuff mm. like that. Yeah, he doesn't like, really. I'll be honest, Tommy. He barely like. It's hard for me to work with him. He's very, um, because I think sometimes I'm a bit like selfish and self centered. Like, I pretty much just think about my show and what I can do for my show because I'm so worried about my own stuff. Um, he's super that way. So, like, because I've asked him, it was like, took forever to get him on my show to do a podcast. Like, it's, he doesn't do stuff lightly, like, with anybody. You know, it's, I was it's, lucky to see him get him on my show back in the day. I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't know. It, oh, dude, if you got him on, like that's really lucky. Like it's hard to get him. I'm so, swear I did, to God. It was when I was doing Google Plus. That's when I was doing Google Plus Hangouts, and I was just lucky to get him on and interview him and ask him questions and stuff like that. He 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 handled me pretty well, and we had a great time. Mm. But apparently, you know, uh, I don't know if it was in two. Uh, it was finally in two thousand. I think it was before two thousand sixteen that I actually got a hold of him and started asking him for an interview. And he came on a Google Plus Hangout because he kept saying something's wrong with the link, Tommy. Something's wrong with the link. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So I'd have to send him like two or three links. Just for him to come on the show for me to hit record and do the interview. Oh my god! I, yeah, I, I remember kind that. Of glad that I don't do Google Plus Hangouts anymore because Google Plus Hangouts were so annoying. Like literally, if you had the link somehow get leaked out, your show is yep. ruined because then everybody would come in the show yeah. and would ruin it, and I'd have to end the show well, just like that. If all your friends are dickheads. Well, Rasmus did that to me one time. He, w- I was doing a show. I was interviewing a. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Jesse. I guess he went to bed. Did he? Yeah, he just there? left. Um, but. Oh man, that's too bad. I had a great joke I was gonna spit out in a minute, and he would have fucking died laughing at it. Oh. Um, I tweet. I I actually put out a joke. Ass. That's who. That's what he is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I'm ass. Yes, man. So the name of the book is 
Let me see if I can find the name. I actually mm-hmm. bought it, so I have to look on Amazon. Name and an author. I'll fucking Joe, get it. you're not recording anymore now, are you? I am, yeah, but we'll say goodbye. Of course he is, dude. Are you kidding? Yeah, I haven't stopped yet. Why? What do you... What's the topic you're going to get into? You, you want to show us well, your dick? I wanted to ask you a question, something private, and I and uh, mm-hmm. I want to know something. Well, I'll tell you how big it is. I'll tell you how big it is. I'll tell you in front of everybody. No, but uh, we are going to get out of here. It's been so long. Uh, thank you, guys. Well, dude, t- t- tell the book. Tell the book title. Oh, yeah. Let me um, hold on a second. I got to go scroll down and find it. Hold on. I've ordered so much shit on Amazon over the last couple of days. I mean, people will fucking get more out of the interview when they hear the, read the That's book. That's a great point, yeah. No, I, I just ordered me some masks off eBay just today. Oh, you got some masks. I now I bought them in January. No, but no, that's yeah. cool that you found them, man. I, I've got I've had them luckily, but I've gave I've given a few away, man, because like people didn't have them, really needed them. Um, but hopefully, yeah, that we all that's good. You got some. That's just really. That's cool. what I'm gonna do. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> I'll, I'll be getting them. Uh, what what? Let's uh, try to remember. It's April right now. April twenty eighth. Ventiocho. And then, um, I'll be getting them um, uh, May the 5th. I'll be getting them May the 5th. Okay, May the 5th. So Cinco de Mayo, you're going to get them? I fucking just hate in, Skype. No one's going to no one's gonna celebrate Cinco de Mayo at all because this it was this whole thing. Oh, we're going to celebrate it all we right. You can celebrate the hell out of it. Yeah, we're going to celebrate the fuck out of it at home. Yeah, it's going to be crazy, Tommy. Fuck it. Fuck that. Shoot, shoot fireworks at the neighbor's yard. Yeah, we're going to shoot it at the fucking neighbor. <laughs> What's annoying is North Carolina is so stupid. They they all their fireworks are dumbed down. Like they're pieces of crap. Like honestly, so they're basically what they allow in LA, like fucking sparklers and bullshit. Yes, smoke bombs and stuff like that. It really sucks. You have to to get the best fireworks, you have to travel down to Atlanta. And buy the nice fireworks you, and then mm-hmm. drive back up. Do, do you have a legal thing. place where you live at where you can act? What? Go ahead. Yeah, just, I'm just listening. Something played in the he, background of my bed. Something uh, Jesse said something about. No, we don't have uh, We don't have any like uh, uh, fireworks stands that are illegal here. Well, the way you you said it, it sounded like you used to. Well, I mean, I, I don't know how long has it been since North Carolina. I don't know if it's always been that way because I moved up here around 2004. So I know, as I've known that the firework law is like the only people can have the nice big fireworks are the people that just shoot them off in town, like the like the, the town people. Yeah, I got you. They do the same shit here. It's ridiculous. The name of the book is Intuitive Man by uh, oh, shit. Paul Henry. Dude, I love the name already. Yeah, it's very cool. Skills to attract emotionally healthy partners. It's a very interesting book. Wow, though. dude, this I, is, like this is a book I would read. You or are write. you're going to love this, I think, Jesse. I really think you're going to like it. I sent you a link to his YouTube video discussing it. I think he doesn't have enough talk. Enough people aren't talking yeah, about this guy's it's book. It's Paul Henry, right? There he yeah. is. Yeah. So I reached but out I'm... to him. Uh, but Jesse, okay. Well, anyway, guys, we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this first episode. More of this to come, different guests every episode on iTunes and Stitcher and uh, Spotify and everywhere where podcasts are. We'll see you the next episode.